So far, we've talked about the things that you need to know before you start to approach solving a differential equation. And um, I mentioned that in dynamics, the differential equations that we're going to be dealing with are always ordinary differential equations, and the independent variable is time. Um, now we're going to go on to really the only uh, method of solving differential equations that you're going to need for this class. And in fact, um, in my experience, um, if any engineering class you take, um, even through graduate school, uh, if you haven't been told in the class, like sort of warned to look out for specific techniques you need to use, I'd say 95%, maybe that's a conservative estimate, 95% of ordinary differential equations that you're asked to solve will be uh, solvable using separation of variables. It's really um, far and away the technique that you need to be the most comfortable with. Um, okay, so the technique is called separation of variables. And I'm always going to um, abbreviate it SOV, separation of variables. Um, and uh, the way you do it is like this. Given an ordinary differential equation with the independent variable, you know, let's, I'm going to call it T, but and because in dynamics that's the independent variable we're dealing with, but um, this is just as true if the independent variable is x or y or q or whatever. Um, and with the dependent variable y, which means you're trying to solve for a function y of t, um, you're looking for equations that are of this form. Now, not all ODEs can be thought of in this form, and that's why not all ODEs can be solved using separation of variables. But dy dt is equal to some function of y times some function of t, okay? Um, and of course, uh, we're talking about, like I'm not right now specifically uh, talking about the boundary conditions. But say that you have the boundary conditions you need. Okay, so say that you have a differential equation that you can write in this form, a function of y times a function of t. Then from here, you can rewrite this equation as dy over the function of y is equal to the function of t times dt. Um, from here, you can integrate both sides. Of course, when you integrate, you get constants of integration. Um, and you're going to use the boundary conditions to solve for the constants of integration. Okay, so that's the idea. Um, you're looking for things that are in this form, and when you have things in that form, you solve it in this way, through integration. And you end up with constants of integration and you use the boundary conditions to get those. So now I'm just going to go through a few examples, the types of um, the types of problems that you can solve this way. So here's the first example. So let's say we have uh, the equation y dot is equal to y t squared. where y of 0 is equal to 10. 
Um, okay, well, let's first, just because it's a good habit to get into, let's make sure we know what the independent variable is, what the dependent variable or variables are, and uh, make sure we have the boundary conditions we need. Okay, well, we can rewrite this as dy dt. Remember, that's the definition of this y dot is equal to yt squared. Uh, we have a derivative with respect to t, so our independent variable is going to be time. Our dependent variable, in this case, uh, we're looking for y, which means what we're trying to solve for is a function y of the argument t. And now boundary conditions. Uh, how many boundary conditions do we need? We have a single first-order differential equation, and that means that we need one boundary condition, and we have it. Okay, so we're ready to go. Um, now, look at this equation. Do we have a form where we have our first derivative um, equal to a function of y times a function of t? Yes, the function of y in this case is just y. The function of t is t squared. So I'm going to um, move all the y stuff over to one side, move all the t stuff over to the other side. So I have dy over y is equal to t squared dt. And now we can integrate both sides. Whoops. Okay, dy over y is equal to the integral of t squared dt. Uh, we're going to get a natural log function over here when we integrate, you know, 1 over y. Uh, remember there's that absolute value in there, and um, a lot of times you'll see this glossed over sort of in engineering applications, but it's it's not really a good habit to get into to just gloss over things. Um, so I want to tell you a way to think about that because these natural log functions are going to um, pop up pretty often. Okay, so integrate this. Uh, you get natural log of the absolute value of y plus some constant of integration. is equal to t to the third over 3 plus a different constant of integration. Notice that in this case, we have these two constants. We can just combine them, and we end up with natural log of the absolute value of y is equal to t cubed over 3 plus c. All right, so uh, how do we approach this natural log of the absolute value thing? Um, I think, for me, the way I like to approach this is think of the natural log of the absolute value of y as a piecewise function where it's equal to the natural log of y when y is greater than or equal to 0 and it's equal to the natural log of negative y when y is less than 0, okay? So it's really, this is really an expression for two different functions, you know, um, a function that applies on one part of the domain and a function that applies on another part of the domain. So let's deal with this first. That's going to be part A and deal with part B second. Um, so part A, when y is greater than or equal to 0, then we have that the natural log of y is equal to t cubed over 3 plus c. Um, now, uh, if we take, if we raise both sides, like take e to both sides, raise both sides to the, you know what I mean, e to natural log of y is equal to e to all this stuff. Well, e to the natural log of y is just equal to y. And this is e to the power of t cubed over 3 plus c. Uh, you can rewrite that as 
y is equal to, this is uh, e to the t cubed over 3 times e to the c, which just gives us this new constant. You can think of it as c3 e to the power of t cubed over 3. Uh, so what does this function look like? Um, we're dealing with positive values of y, so it looks like a very steep thing like this. And now the other part of that piecewise function, when y is less than 0, you have natural log of negative y is equal to t to the third over 3 plus c. So you have negative y is equal to e to the power of t cubed over 3 plus c. And you get y is equal to negative c3 e to the t cubed over 3. And the function looks like this. Okay, so if we're dealing with positive values of y, it looks like this. If we're dealing with negative values of y, it looks like this. Uh, why didn't I go into the negative, uh, the negative t, you know, negative values of the domain? Uh, in general, in dynamics, we're just only going to be dealing with positive times. That's really just a convention, but uh, you'll never see people deal with negative times. Um, okay, and now... We're going to, so we have this one constant of integration, C3. And so we're going to use the boundary condition to solve for C3. Um, the boundary condition, where was it? Uh, that we were given in this problem uh, says... When time is equal to 0, y is equal to 10. Okay, so we're dealing with the positive y values. Okay, so we're dealing with this one. And so, um, I guess let me write down that boundary condition. We have y of 0 is equal to 10. And so that says that 10 is equal to C3 times e to the power of 0 cubed over 3. e to the 0 is 1. So C3 is 10. And so what we get for a final answer is the dependent variable we're solving for that function y of t is equal to 10e to the t cubed over 3. Okay? So that's separation of variables. Let's do another example. And uh, this is a second order ODE. The first one was a first order ODE. This is second. Uh, so let's say we have the differential equation x double dot is equal to 2t squared. Where x of 0 is equal to 2, and x dot of 2 is equal to 4. All right. Uh, so how many independent variables do we have? You know, you could rewrite this as second derivative of x with respect to time is equal to 2t squared. So our independent variable is t, 
that's good. It's an ordinary differential equation. And our dependent variable is the function x of t. That's what we're trying to solve. Now, do we have enough boundary conditions? We have one single equation. It's second order. Um, so we need two boundary conditions, and we have them. Okay. So now we know it's ordinary different, an ordinary differential equation. We know what we're trying to solve for, and we know we have the boundary conditions. We can try to do separation of variables. Um, all right, so uh, the way to, that I'm going to think about this is think of x double dot as the derivative of x dot with respect to time, okay? So we're gonna do it once to solve for x dot, and then we're gonna use separation of variables again to solve for x. Um, okay, so our differential equation says dx dot dt uh, is equal to 2t squared. Uh, can we use separation of variables? Well, this is sort of the, um, you know, uh, we're looking for a product of a function of x and a function of t. Do we have a function of x? Yeah, well, I guess 1 is a function of t. Uh, sorry, 1 is a function of x. So we have uh, 1 times 2t squared, that's the function of t. So yeah, we can split it up, and we get dx dot um, divided by 1, you could say, is equal to 2t squared dt. And now you can integrate both sides. What do you get if you take the integral of dx dot, you get x dot plus c1. Uh, and over here, if you take the integral of this, you get 2t to the third over 3 plus c2. You can combine those and those two constants of integration. You get x dot is equal to 2t cubed over 3 plus c. And now let's rewrite that. We have another step to do because we haven't solved for the function x of t yet. We've solved for the function x dot of t, um, if we knew what this constant was. Um, so now x dot is dx dt. Uh, and that is equal to 2t cubed over 3 plus c. And again, you want to look at this and see at each step, do we have the requirements to solve this by separation of variables? Well, yeah, again, our function of x is 1. Our function of t is all of this stuff on the right side. So we have dx over 1 is equal to 2t cubed over 3 plus c times dt. Integrate both sides, and you get x plus c3 is equal to uh, t to the fourth over 6. Is that right? Yes. Plus ct plus c to the fourth. You can uh, lump c3 and c4 together, and you get x is equal to t to the fourth over 6 plus ct plus c5. And now we're going to use the boundary conditions to solve for these two constants of integration. And uh, look at how nice it works out. We 
knew from before that we needed two boundary conditions in order to solve this. And those two boundary conditions are going to be used now to solve for two constants of integration, C and C5 in this case. Um, OK, well, the first one says, so boundary condition 1 says uh, when t is equal to 0, x is equal to 2. So plug in 0 for t, and you get that 2 is equal to 0 plus 0 plus c5. And so c5 is equal to 2. Boundary condition 2 says t equal to 2 means the derivative of x is equal to 4. And actually, uh, let me step back for a second and let's just, um, before we do this, let's update our equation. I think that's a good habit to get into. Okay, so so let's update our function x of t that we're trying to solve for. Before we knew it was this, now x of t we know is t to the fourth over six plus ct plus two, right? I updated you know, put the value um, in for C5. And so now we know it's this. We just have to solve for this value C, and then we're done. Okay, well, X dot, that means, is equal to... Uh, if, uh, T cubed. Let's see. Yeah, 2t cubed over 3 um, plus c. So now um, our new boundary condition that says when t is equal to 2, x is equal to 4. Now we're going to uh, plug in 2 for all these t's. And we're going to get that 4 is equal to 2 thirds times 2 to the third pl power plus c. And so you get, if you solve that, c is equal to negative 1.33333. And now we can do our final, uh, come up with our final function, x of t. And we get that that function x of t that we're looking for, that dependent variable, is equal to t to the fourth over 6 minus 1.333 and on and on t plus 2. And then you're done. Okay. Um, now, that was one where uh, the boundary conditions were, one boundary condition was given in terms of x, and one boundary condition was given in terms of uh, the derivative of x. They don't have to be that way. They actually can both be given as values of x. So let me do one example where both boundary conditions are values of x, just at different specific values of time. OK, so here we have 5x double dot is equal to 2 cosine of the quantity 3t. where x of 5 is equal to 1, and x of 10 is equal to 12. Okay. 
Uh, well, the independent variable is time. The dependent variable is x. So we're looking for the function x of t. It's a single differential equation that's second order. So we need two boundary conditions, and we have them. Okay, so uh, we're ready to start trying to solve this by separation of variables. Okay, so we have, we can rewrite this as 5 dx dot dt is equal to 2 cosine 3t. Uh, and uh, you can rewrite this as 5 dx dot is equal to the integral of 2 cosine 3t dt. If you solve this, you get 5x dot um, plus 1 constant of integration is equal to negative 2 thirds times the sine of 3t plus a second constant of integration. Lump those two constants together and you get 5x dot is equal to 2 thirds times the sine of the quantity 3t plus uh, this, these lumped values, let's call those c. Um, and now, uh, this x dot, I'm going to do the second step. This x dot is equal to dx dt. So we can think of this as 5x, uh, sorry, 5dx, and integrate it, is equal to the integral of 2 thirds sine 3t plus c dt. When you integrate that, you get 5x plus c, uh, what c am I on? I'm trying not to reuse these numbers to try to help it not be so confusing. So we went up to c2, so let's call this plus c3 is equal to negative 2 ninths times the cosine of 3t plus C T plus C four. Um, so we get five x is equal to. I'm lumping these together now, and um, I'm going to change the constant names to capital C's. So uh, this is now negative two ninths times the cosine of the quantity 3t plus c1 times time plus capital C2. Okay, so now boundary condition number one. Uh, and we're doing, we're going to use these boundary conditions to solve for these capital C's x, when time is equal to 5, is equal to 1. So, uh, wait, is that what it was? Let me just make sure. Um, yeah, when time is equal to 5, x is equal to 1. So, uh, we have, plug these values in here, 5 times the x value of 1 is equal to negative 2 ninths times cosine of 3 times the time value plus c1 times 5 plus c2 
and if you simplify this, you get, you know, uh, remember, by the way, that uh, whenever you have a trig function um, uh, where time is like one of the, arg you know, time is part of the argument of the trig function, you're dealing with radians. So anyways, calculate the cosine of 15 radians and you get 5 is equal to, uh, let me skip that, and just go right to simplifying this as 5 C1 plus C2 is equal to 4.83. Okay, unlike the last example, we can't do anything with this right? We have this equation. It does give us a relationship between C1 and C2, but we can't do anything yet. So what you do in this case is we're going to use the second boundary condition, come up with another linear equation for C1 and C2, and then we're just going to solve this linear system of equations for C1 and C2. We'll have two equations for two variables. So boundary condition 2 says... When time is equal to 10, x is equal to 12. So we have 5, you know, going back to this equation here. We have 5 times 12 is equal to negative 2 ninths cosine of 3 times 10. Uh, plus C1 times 10 plus C2. And so you get 10 C1 plus C2 is equal to 60.034. Now these two equations, neither one gives you a solution, but it's two equations for two unknowns, so you can solve it as a system. Um, you can just plug it into your calculator or do it by substitution, uh, and you get C1 is equal to 11.04 C2 is equal to negative 50.374. Uh, plug those into our equation, our expression for x. You know, divide both sides by 5 and you get the function x of t by itself but plug in the constants for C1 and C2, and you get x as a function of time is equal to negative 2 45ths uh, times cosine of 3t plus 2.21 t minus 10.08. And there's your dependent variable as a function of time. Okay. Uh, so far, all the examples we've done have been single ordinary differential equations. What happens if you have systems of ODEs? This is going to come up a lot, remember, because... Um, our, say, our position, our velocity, or our acceleration uh, forces, those are all vectors. So they all have three components, right? So it's not going to be uncommon to have, to be looking for a dependent variable x of t and a dependent variable y of t and a, maybe a dependent variable z of t, right? Um, okay, so systems of ordinary differential equations. 
Uh, can you use separations of separation of variables to solve for those? Um, yes, in certain conditions. So here's an example. What if we have x dot is equal to 5xt and y dot is equal to 2y squared t squared. where x of 0 is equal to 1, and y of 0 is equal to 5. Okay, well, our independent variable is t, so it's an ODE, that's good. Our dependent variables, we're looking for two of them this time. We're looking for x of t, and we're looking for y of t. Since we have two equations, and they're both first order, we know we need two boundary conditions, and we have them. So we should be able to solve this. So what's the key to knowing uh, whether um, what's the key to knowing whether you can solve this by um, by separation of variables or not? Um, first of all, you still need each of these expressions to be um, a function of the dependent variable times the function of the independent variable, otherwise separation of variables doesn't work. But the other thing you have to look for if you have a system is are these equations coupled or uncoupled? Um, what does that mean? Another way of saying that is are the x's and y's mixed up, or do they stay in their own equations? Um, in this class, we'll only see uncoupled systems. In other words, um, uh, our x dot is going to only have t's and x's in it. Our y dot is only going to have y's and you know t's and y's in it. You won't ever have an equation where you have, say, an x dot and then a y in the same equation. If you have that, there are approaches to it, but we're not going to deal with it in this class. Okay. Um, so what do you do if they are uncoupled, like the ones we're going to see? Then you just treat this system as two independent ordinary differential equations. You can solve one without relying at all on the other one. Okay, so what do we have in this case? Is this, this example I gave, is this coupled or uncoupled? It's uncoupled, which is good news for us. And it's uncoupled because you have x dot and x in one equation with nothing else but t's. And you have y dot and y in a separate equation with nothing else but t's in it. And so we can treat these independently. Um, OK, so let's solve this example above. It's uncoupled. So we have one equation that says dx dt is equal to 5x t where x is 0 is equal to 1. Um, so you can think of this as dx over x, integrate that, is equal to the integral of 5t dt. Um, 
you get natural log of, so now I am gonna be lazy, gloss over this, but if you, um, because I happen to know that, uh, that the boundary condition I have deals with positive x's, so I'm gonna gloss over this absolute value, but if you're not sure how to treat that, go back to that first example that I gave uh, where I talked about um, how to break up this natural log of the absolute value into a piecewise function. So we get natural log of x uh, plus the constant of integration, blah, 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 um, is equal to 5 p squared over 2. I'm lumping the two constants of integration together. Now I'm going to uh, raise both sides, you know, e to each side, and you get x is equal to capital C times e to the power of 5 t squared over 2. The boundary condition says um, uh, says when t is equal to 0, x is equal to 1. So plug that in here and you get 1 is equal to c e to the 0. So c is equal to 1. And so we have one of our dependent variables x of t is equal to e to the 5t squared over 2. Um, and now we're going to do the equation, the y equation. We have dy dt is equal to 2y squared t squared. So you have the integral of dy over y squared is equal to the integral of 2t squared dt. Integrate both sides and you get negative y to the negative 1 is equal to 2 thirds t cubed plus some constant of integration. Our boundary condition says y when time is equal to 0 is equal to 5. So we get negative 1 fifth, I'm just plugging these into the equation we have here, is equal to 2 thirds times 0 plus c. And that tells us that c is equal to negative 0.2. So now plug this back into this equation here, and you get negative 1 over y is equal to 2 thirds t cubed minus 0.2. And now you'd have to, you know, just fiddle with this to get, uh, you know, you have to take the reciprocal. Uh, you could spend a lot of time simplifying this, I suppose, but um, take, you know, multiply both sides by negative 1, and you get negative 2 thirds t cubed plus 0.2. Now take the reciprocal of both sides, and you get the function y of t is equal to 1 over negative 2 thirds t cubed plus and now you've solved for the two dependent variables you needed. You, you solved for x as a function of time, and now you've solved for y as a function of time, and so you're done.